Welcome to our Physical Intrusion Detection Alarms and CCTV module. Alarm systems or physical intrusion detection systems are considered to be a detective control. These systems identify attempts to penetrate a system or a building by an attacker who is attempting to gain unauthorized access. These systems can include control units, sensors, transmission lines, and display monitoring units, and you can either have a silent alarm or an audible alarm. It is important to determine who will monitor the alarm and who will respond to the alarms. You can use a security guard to monitor and respond to the alarms, or you can use an external monitoring center that will receive the alarms and then notify the local police department. These systems are typically enabled and deactivated using a keypad with a PIN number. The system should be activated by a primary and an alternate employee when employees leave for the day. This way, if the primary employee forgets to turn on the alarm or is off for the day, the alternate employee will be able to make sure the alarm is activated. Whoever monitors the system, whether that's an internal employee or an external monitoring center, should have names and phone numbers of who they should call if the alarm goes off. It is also important to make sure that each employee has a separate code, that way you can identify and access to the building and trace it back to a specific individual. Burglar alarms can be part of a defense in-depth strategy with multiple levels of protection to ensure that unauthorized access does not occur. As part of your strategy, you should provide additional protection for sensitive areas such as server rooms, but you may not need as much protection for conference rooms, work areas, and hallways. You can deter and respond to intrusion by monitoring all sides of the sensitive area that you are trying to protect. You should use steel frames on doors, walls, ceilings, floors, and vents, and you should attempt to avoid windows and non-laminate glass on lower floors because this can make it easy for an attacker to enter the building. You can use security guards who are responsible for monitoring alarms and security cameras or who are mobile and can be on foot or in a patrol vehicle looking for unauthorized individuals. You can also make these individuals part of an emergency response team who are able to quickly respond to emergencies. You can use motion detectors and there are several types passive infrared, microwave, and dual motion sensors which combine both technologies. You can use sensors to detect intrusion such as magnetic door switches that will alert you when a door opens and glass breakage detectors that can detect when a piece of glass shatters. And you should use cameras and closed circuit television recording to capture incidents as they occur and monitor those that are entering and exiting your facility. It is important to select the correct lens for the job if you are going to be using zoom lenses, the more millimeters, the longer the lens is able to see. And it's important to use correct weather resistant housing if these cameras will be outside to protect them from damage and make sure that they are working properly. You should also make sure that they are tamper resistant and that they will notify an appropriate personnel if someone disconnects them or attempts to modify them or break them. With closed circuit television systems, you will use a collection of cameras, recorders, and video monitors so that security events can be viewed and also saved to a disk or some other type of storage system. Cameras are typically centrally monitored and controlled, which allows multiple people from different locations to view the cameras, sometimes even with an audio feed. These individuals can monitor the cameras and determine if a response is required and if so, what type of response should occur. Cameras are a very good visible deterrent to different types of crimes. Even fake cameras are able to deter individuals from committing crimes. If a crime does occur, you can use archived images and video to help identify and prosecute the individual responsible for committing crimes. There are some important topics to consider when you are installing a camera system. If you are going to be installing cameras outside, you should consider the weather and make sure to use appropriate weather resistant housing for the cameras. If you're going to use a fixed position camera, these are very good for monitoring a single obvious location such as an entrance. Dome cameras often have PTZ or pan tilt zoom capabilities which allows an individual to move the camera around to scan a large area such as a parking lot. 
IP cameras or internet protocol cameras are popular now and use power over ethernet so that they can obtain power to run from the ethernet cabling and you do not have to run separate power cords to these devices. If you do not want to run wires, you can use wireless cameras to transmit video images. However, these are considered to be less secure because individuals can interfere with them wirelessly. There are different types of lenses that can be used, such as fisheye lenses, which can provide you with a distorted wide angle view, as well as 3.6 millimeter wide lenses and 32 millimeter zoom lenses. It is important to determine what you are trying to capture and then select the correct lens for the job. If there are going to be low light environments or if you're using cameras outside, there is infrared technology built into cameras which allow them to see in very low light environments or even in pitch black. You should try to use cameras with good frame rates and image resolution because this will make it easier to detect any unauthorized activity and identify individuals later because the quality of the video will be much better. And you should also think about using motion activated cameras which can start recording when they detect motion and therefore are not recording all of the time wasting valuable storage space. These cameras can also send an alert by text message or email to your security individuals or management staff to notify them that there is perhaps unauthorized motion in or around your building. It is very important prior to deploying a system to make sure that you plan properly so that the system will meet your requirements. The system is designed to detect, recognize, and identify intruders and suspicious activity. You should be familiar with the focal lengths of the lens for the CISSP examination. The focal length will determine its effectiveness in viewing objects from a horizontal or vertical view. And you should remember that a lens with a short focal length will provide a wide angle view and a lens with a long focal length will provide a narrower view. You need to determine how you're going to record the data that is captured by your cameras. It can be transmitted to your local recording system or a remote monitoring station either using wired technology or wireless technology and wired technology is considered to be more secure. You should have proper lighting in the area that you are attempting to record because you will need to be able to tell the difference between objects and background. If you do not have proper lighting you can use LED cameras to increase the lighting in the area. You should also be aware of blind spots and lens requirements and you should make sure that you do not allow blind spots to occur because if individuals learn where there is a blind spot then they may be able to attack in that particular area without being captured on tape. You should also consider the number of cameras that you will use as well as the aspect ratio. The most common cameras use a 4 to 3 horizontal to vertical aspect ratio although there are different types of cameras available for special use cases. You will also have a few special considerations to think about, such as workplace privacy issues. Are you going to notify the employees that they are being recorded, or are you planning on recording surreptitiously? You'll need to check the local laws in your area to determine if you are permitted to record without notifying. You can also think about using a virtual CCTV system where your camera data is stored in a remote location at a service provider who can also provide you with the ability to monitor that data in real time and notify you of any suspicious activity. This concludes our physical intrusion detection module. Thank you for watching.